But of course, it's not just there that we have secrecy. And of course, the NSA needs to know everything about us. At the same time, we can know nothing about what the government is doing, and especially not what the real government is doing. That is the international corporations that are writing the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This news story says from New York Times, the NSA is devising a radio pathway into computers. Does that sound familiar? Well, the New York Times reports that the NSA has increasingly made use of a secret technology that enables it to enter and alter data in computers, even if they're not connected to the internet. And of course, we reported that four months ago, and we're gonna have that full report right after the show, so stay tuned and see that. In that report, we point out that it's something that Intel put inside the computers. It's far more pervasive than even the recent revelations about the Tau group inside of the NSA that is intercepting equipment and putting hardware in it on its way being shipped to the end customer. Now, as you can see from this story, back in 2006, we were reporting that they could watch you as well as listen to you and that they were data mining the information. But the New York Times says this has been going on since at least 2008. Well, much longer than that. But look at the other lie in this article from the New York Times. They say, no domestic use is seen of this. They say there's no evidence that the NSA has implanted its software or used its radio frequency technology inside of the United States. That's absolutely a lie. We were told back in 2001, William Benny, the highest ranking person on the technical side of the NSA, as well as several other whistleblowers like Drake and others, left the NSA over this very issue, the fact that the FISA court, this thing that was set up in the aftermath of the church hearings back in 1978, they were specifically limited to foreign operations and they were moving it to domestic operations. So of course, this is exactly being done in the United States. It's being done all the time in every way in the United States. Now, the LA Times is also reporting that there is a secret surveillance court judge who is opposing any reform ideas that are being floated by the Obama presidential panel. Now, Obama is trying to walk this back. He's trying to save a little bit of face. And so they've put out a little bit of window dressing out here, but they got slammed by the secret star chamber judges that are running this FISA court. Listen to what he had to say. In a blunt letter to the House and Senate Intelligence and Judiciary Committees, U.S. District Judge John D. Bates made it clear that the 11 judges of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, quote unquote court, are united in opposition to key recommendations by a presidential task force last month aimed at increasing transparency and judicial oversight, including at least one that Obama has tentatively endorsed. And he said that participation of an advocate that's watching them, a privacy advocate, would neither create a truly adversarial process nor constructively assist the courts in assessing the facts, as the advocate would be unable to communicate with the target or conduct an independent investigation. Well, he's right about that because the FISA courts are not courts. That's why we have courts, so that someone can communicate with the target, so that you can conduct an investigation, so that you can argue both sides, and so that the opinion can be made public. But he has something to say about that as well. He says, releasing freestanding summaries of court opinions is likely to promote confusion and misunderstanding. Well, yeah, I'm confused. I guess maybe I misunderstood the Constitution when it put limits on people, when it said that we're going to have a court, and yet these people are turning back court procedures and things that we got rid of hundreds of years ago when we set up real courts. We're returning back to a star chamber system. But it isn't just secret courts with secret decisions and nobody arguing the other side. We can't even see what the budget is going to be for these people. Look at this article from the Daily Caller. Congress to intelligence community, show me the money. And it says there are 16 agencies that are involved in intelligence for the U.S., and the budget for doing so cannot be found anywhere in the 1,500-page appropriations bill that Congress will vote on this week. Their budgets are considered to be classified, kept secret from Americans, even from most members of Congress. Well, how is that different from everything that the government is doing today? Everything the government is doing is secret. And, of course, it's done in the name of security. Now, the Democrat who is introducing this... I appreciate him doing this, but listen to what he says. This is Peter Welch. He says, we're trying to get back the right balance between security and privacy. No, no, there is no balance between security and privacy. Privacy and liberty have to trump. There isn't a trade-off. Remember, they call a prison that is the worst kind of prison you can live in maximum security. Freedom transcends that.
Now, look at what Homeland Security is doing. We're out in California with the InfoWars crew. We're trying to take radiation readings because people are concerned about that. And of course, the government is concerned about that. They've ordered 14 million dosages of potassium iodide. They want it in just 30 days. It's now just two weeks. So there's a lot of concern. And the government is flying a helicopter around Baltimore, a very large helicopter at a very low altitude. And they say they're doing it to get a reading on background radiation. This is a story from Paul Joseph Watson, low-flying Homeland Security helicopter to test for radiation. And what they say is this is a massive helicopter. It's going to be doing this for years, and it's going to be flying at 150 feet. Now, that's very low. I looked up the FAA regulations. For a helicopter, you don't get that low safely. They say that if it's over a congested area in a city, town, or settlement, or over any open-air assembly of persons, an altitude of 1,000 feet above the highest obstacle within a horizontal radius of 2,000 feet of the aircraft. And then they say over other than congested areas, an altitude of 500 feet above the surface, except over open water. So they're breaking all of their rules. They're going extremely low. They're going to be doing this for years. Why? Because they're concerned about radiation. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products, and promote the ideals of liberty.